What does Old Spice shaving mug soap and a can of coffee in today's supermarket and Procter & Gamble have in common? Stay tuned for another of the continuing series of the history of shaving. In 1937, William Lightfoot Schultz uh, developed early American Old Spice. There were fragrances for women. In the next year, 1938, he marketed an aftershave for men, which he just called Old Spice. And he then put uh, over five and a half ounces of a mug shaving soap in a beautiful pottery uh, cup and uh, uh, placed it on the market. It became very popular. Uh, then World War II hit, and what happened was the company used the war effort to distribute its shaving products to the military uh, all over the world the Old Spice aftershave and mug soap was brought. When the war ended, the price for making the mug soap had gone up quite a bit. How were they going to present and make a profit on this and still keep it within a reasonable and affordable amount? If you remember in the 1980s and late 90s, the price for Arabica coffee beans skyrocketed. And what the coffee companies did was the pound of coffee soon became 14 and then 13 ounces in a can of coffee. This is how they were able to keep their product on the market at an affordable price. Well, Old Spice did the same thing back then. They introduced a glass, wheat and glass mug, and uh, now the amount was reduced to only five ounces of the shaving mug soap. This could still last about nine months, but it kept the price down, both the quality of the mug and the amount of the soap was reduced but they kept the price pretty much the same as it was before World War II. Then came the introduction of lathering and non-lathering shaving creams and tubes, and more importantly, the aerosol can shaving cream. The aerosol can had propellants in it and a small amount of a petroleum-based uh, lather. Uh, there was actually less uh, uh, lather in, in soap in this can, and when you used it, you were mostly using air, and the, the shaving cream actually took up less materials to make. How could you get the public to buy less at, at a worse quality and pay more? Well, the answer was advertising. And they advertised uh, the, the can shaving cream quite a bit in a number of old commercials that you can still see on YouTube to this day. To hire the profit margin for the mug of uh, shaving soap, 
they simply eliminated all commercials and most advertising for it. Um, and they reduced the amount again. Uh, and the refill uh, was really only 2.5 ounces. When Propter and Gamble took over um, Schulten and the Old Spice label, they wanted to get rid of really Old Spice as being your grandma's or grandpa's uh, products. So they just did away with the tradition of the shaving mug. And they added uh, n these new commercials to make Old Spice into something it really wasn't. They used the name on a number of, of products but what it amounted to is like trying to develop the cutting edge of oatmeal. You couldn't take a traditional product and make it modern. And the sales of Old Spice continued to slump despite their new advertising. Believe it or not, in bending to the European and Asian market, Procter & Gamble still makes Old Spice shaving cream in India, but distributes it only in Europe and Asia. All Procter & Gamble seems to have accomplished is to destroy the American tradition of the Old Spice shaving mug and shaving soap and try to take an old uh, traditional aftershave name and market it as something it's not. It's like really putting a square peg in a round hole. Um, all the efforts of trying to keep um, the products affordable have only ended up with uh, the companies looking cheap and rather ridiculous. Um, the other day I was in the supermarket and that pound of coffee and that pound which used to be 16 ounces, I saw a can of coffee and it was only 10 ounces. So this type of marketing still continues and it continues also in the history of shaving.